Affairs will come to order. Uh, let the record reflect I'm Peter Penaleo substituting for our chairman, Joe Loda, who's been a little uh, tied up with other matters. Uh, the first item on the agenda, action item on the agenda is approval of the minutes of, minutes of September 5th, 2012. Do I have a motion to approve those minutes? Move it. Thank you. Second. Uh, all those in favor? All. Okay. As opposed or as abstention? Okay, the second item on the agenda is consideration of the fiscal year 2013-2014 operating budget request. I call on Associate Vice Chancellor Sapienza to speak on this item. Thank you, Trustee Penaleo. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Thank you all for, for being here today. I know despite uh, Chair Lotus and the MTS heroic efforts, uh, it was difficult for a lot of you folks to get here. So, uh, so thanks all for being here. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I know there's a lot of other things that are going on and, and you know, talk about the budget may be trivial, but, um, but we're here to, to do the budget request for fiscal 14. Um, so you all have a copy of the actual request um, narrative. Um, it was sent out last week and there's a hard copy, spiral it down copy um, at each of your seats. Um, you have the budget resolution in front of you, but what I want to go through to kind of summarize the request is a PowerPoint presentation that's um, also at the table um, for the, the operating budget request. And I, I want to introduce our Deputy Budget Director, Kathy Abada, who's, who's here, and Kathy, uh, and under her leadership, the folks in the University Budget Office have done tremendous work in getting that, the request together, so Kathy, thank you. Catherine the Great, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to go through the PowerPoint. I saw it in his office. The first two um, slides um, detail the compact. So we're using the CUNY compact as the vehicle for financing our request for fiscal uh, 14. And I know most of you are familiar with the compact. We're leveraging uh, public resources. Um, with our own internal financing sources um, to create the financing that's needed to fund not only the mandatory cost increases but also the, the programmatic initiatives. And on slide three, there's more detail about the compact. Um, we're asking the state and city to pick up 100% of our mandatory costs and a, and a small share of the investment program to balance the investment program the university will cover through it's self-financing uh, resources. Before we get to the fiscal 14 request on slide four, I just want to take you through a little bit of the history of the compact in terms of looking at some real numbers. The first year of the compact was fiscal year 2007. So fiscal 14, this is the eighth year that we're going to be using the compact as our financing vehicle. And since fiscal year 2007, we've added $251 million in programmatic investments at our campuses. And I want to point out that these are programmatic initiatives. These aren't to pay for mandatory cost increases or, or um, contractual increases, cost of living. These are all programmatic investments that have been made. $175 million at the senior colleges and $67 million at the community colleges. And by far the largest portion of that $251 million has been $60 million for full-time faculty, about $41 million at the, at the seniors, and 19 at the communities. And that translates into 880 new faculty lines being added since fiscal 2007 at our, at our campuses. And again, these are new faculty lines. They're not lines to replace folks who lost or to replace folks who left the early retirement center. These are new lines that have been added. So the compact has certainly had um, a concrete a benefit to our campuses since 2007. Okay, so now let's talk about fiscal 14 and where we are in terms of using the compact for our budget request. Um, this year's request, um, we had a roadmap to putting together this year's request because we had the university's master plan. Back this past June, the board of trustees approved a new master plan for 2012 through 
2016. Um, and so again, that was our roadmap for putting together the request for fiscal 14. We also did consultations with the uh, Council of Presidents Fiscal Committee, which President Meiskin's chair, so, so Jim, thank you very much for that. Uh, we met with the Budget Advisory Council of the University of Utah Senate, which, um, which Trustee Martell chair. So Terry, again, thank you for all the input on that. And, and we, Kafui, thank you for your input. We met with, the, with Kafui to get the University Student Senate um, feedback on, on our budget request and, and what our priorities should be. So all of that feedback was tremendously helpful. Uh, we took that feedback and we tied it into the four main missions that are outlined in the CUNY Master Plan. And those are described on pages uh, five through seven in, in the presentation. Um, mission one is expanding academic excellence and the, the main focus here is the addition of full-time faculty the um, ongoing mission to continue to fund the decade of science, which runs through 2015, is included in this mission as well. Mission two is integrating, uh, maintaining an integrated system and facilitating articulation. Uh, these are initiatives that help students accu acclimate to college life. And a big portion of, of this mission that's included in our request is expanding the ASAP program. And we're going to talk about that a little later in the, in the presentation. Um, slide six talks about mission three, which is expanding access. There's a lot of our programs that are tied into student services that are captured in mission three. Um, services for students with disabilities, veteran services, the Black Male Initiative, um, and all of those programs that help with college readiness. And lastly, on, on slide seven, mission four, remaining responsive to the urban setting. These are things that one may not uh, think are part of the mission of a public university, but things that the university feels are important to contributing to the well-being of the, of the city and state. Things like workforce and economic development, educating teachers and healthcare professionals, and sustainability efforts. Um, and one of the things that we're going to be asking, that we are including in our request um, that's tied to Mission 4 is to seek funding to develop more internships in the STEM disciplines, not only to help our students, but also to help the, the workforce in, in New York City um, to develop folks who are able to, to be proficient in those areas. Okay, so sl on slide eight, um, in addition to the master plan categories, we are also, in our request, enhancing the student financial aid initiative um, the Student Financial Aid Initiative for Fiscal 13, the current year we're in, we set aside $5 million, and those funds we use for tuition waivers uh, for our students um, to enhance the federal work-study program um, that we currently have and to help students with the cost of textbooks. And what we did with a lot of those funds were to purchase textbooks and to have them on loan in our libraries for the students to take on loan rather than have to go to the bookstore and buy them. Um, and so for fiscal 14, we are including our request to increase the student financial initiative from $5 million to $10 million. Uh, and in addition, the other change we're making is a portion of that $10 million is going to be set aside specifically for graduate students. Um, we've been getting a lot of feedback from our colleges and from the USS about uh, the need to help graduate students with, with financial assistance as well. That last bullet point on page eight, I always think is a good um, thing for us to, to, to think about and to, and to remember that um, last year the university administered over $560 million in Pell Grants and $266 million in, in, in TAP awards. So it's over $820 million in, in financial aid in addition to the $5 million student financial aid initiative and in addition to that, our campuses do private fundraising, as you know, to raise scholarships as well. And I know this is probably a good time for, for me to just point out that the CUNY value document that um, was put together by, by Vice Chancellor Hutchinson's office, thank you, is that all, is that all of your um, seats. It's a terrific document um, that describes the tremendous value that our students are getting gives comparisons to other public higher ed universities in terms of tuition, in terms of financial aid. So 
when you get a chance, please please take a look at that. It's a terrific document. Thanks. So let's move on to some of the numbers in fiscal 14. Um, so slide nine summarizes the budget request for fiscal 14. And it's broken out by our three main funding sources, state aid, city support, and tuition. Um, our current our budget for the current year is $2.8 billion. Um, we, we project to have mandatory cost increases of $115 million. And We'll get into the components of that in the later slide. And then we have programmatic requests of $93.5 million. And so this would bring our budget up to over $3 billion for fiscal 14. This programmatic request of 93.5 is what we're asking for in terms of increasing our appropriation for state, city, and tuition. However, as I said earlier, the compact also includes self-financing components, namely private fundraising and productivity and efficiencies within our own budget. And those total 17 and a half million. So adding those on to these programmatic requests brings the total investment program that's included in our budget request to $111 million. And if we turn to slide 10, you can see how we're proposing to finance the request. Um, we're asking the state and city to pick up all the mandatory needs and a portion of the programmatic initiatives, $14.7 million. Um, and then there is a $22.8 million component for community college state aid increase. And I want to spend a minute or two talking about this. The community college, as most of you know, are funded um, from the state on a per FTE basis. So the number of students that we have, as it increases, we get more state aid. However, the base aid number that the state has funded has been reduced in recent years. And just to give you an example, in fiscal year 2009, the state was funding $2,675 per FTE for every community college full-time equivalent student that we had. Um, that number was reduced in fiscal year 12 to $2,122 per FTE. So we lost over $550 per FTE in those four fiscal years. Fiscal year 13, we did get a $150 increase to that number, so now we're at 2,272, and we're very grateful to have that restoration in fiscal 13. But we're still far below where we were in fiscal year 2009, and certainly from 2009 to now, we have a lot more community college students to serve as well. So we're asking for a increase of $260 per FTE in fiscal 14. We've done consultations with SUNY, with the SUNY community colleges as well, um, and so this is a collaborative request that we're making on behalf of all the community colleges in the state of New York for a $260 um, increase in fiscal 14. It won't get us back to where we were in 2009, but we want this to be part of a multi-year approach that will eventually get us back there and then hopefully further. Um, so that $260 would, per FTE, would um, generate $22.8 million in additional state aid for the community colleges. Um, and then the other funding sources, additional tuition revenue for next year would be about $70 million. And then what I talked about earlier, our restructuring and our philanthropy, those self-financing components would generate $17.5 million. So the total would be $226 million, $115 million for mandatory needs, and $111 million, excuse me, for programmatic initiatives. The next few slides give some more detail to what those what that $111 million in programmatic initiatives will cover. Um, and so on page 11, you see that, again, tied into our master plan missions, $67 million would go to Mission 1, and 42.6 of that would go specifically um, to hiring additional full-time faculty. And that will cover about 425 additional full-time faculty uh, at our campuses. That would be in addition to the 880 number that, that we talked about a few minutes ago. 15 million for the decade of science and 3 million for academic advising. Um, for the second mission, maintaining an integrated system and facilitating articulation, we have $12.1 million. 
7.9 of that would be to expand the, the very successful ASAP program. We want to expand that to, to 4,000 students. Um, we need some additional money for the expansion of the new community college. We had 300 students in the inaugural class this year, but we want to ramp that up to about at least 3,000 students over time. Um, and in Mission 3, expanding access. Again, these are student services types of initiatives. We are including $2.5 million to enhance veteran services on our campuses. And we're also asking for $1.5 million for the CUNY Leads Program, um, which is an academic and vocational services program for our students with disabilities. Um, we had a $2.5 million grant from State Education Department that was sunsetted several years ago. Um, we were successful in getting a million dollars restored in the state budget last year, but we'd, we'd like to have that program fully funded. It's been a uh, terrific program, very successful, and so we're asking for one and a half million dollars for community leads. And the last mission, remaining responsive to the urban setting, we're asking for about 16 million dollars, two and a half million for workforce development, three million to provide students with meaningful work experiences during college. That goes back to what I was talking about earlier with um, having um, internships in STEM disciplines. And also in here is three and a half million dollars for facilities repairs at our campuses. Matt, should we wait till the end to answer the last question? No, you can ask now. The, um, the uh, 880 faculty that were hired, what, what period of time was that? And, and when I look at the, the 425 additional, we anticipate that will occur over what period of time? The, uh, the 880 is since fiscal year 2007. That's 2007. how many lines that we've, we've added to the campus's budgets for new faculty. Mm -hmm. um, the 425, we would like to hire all in fiscal 2014 if we are able, to, or we're successful um, in obtaining the funding for it. We know that it's difficult with, with search committees and, and identifying um, you know, uh, viable candidates. However, our colleges have done a terrific job you know, over the last 10 years in, in adding additional full-time faculty. So that would be our goal, is to add the 425 in the next academic year. So, so the 880 was over how many years? That was a period of four? Uh, that was a period of six years. Six years. And, and so and am I hearing you correct to say that the 425, which is almost 50% of what was done over six years, you want right. to do in one year? Right, well, keep in mind the 880 that we were able to fund through the compact also came in an environment where from, from fiscal 2009, fiscal 2012, from the state we had over $300 million in, in budget reductions as well. And um, on the community colleges we lost about $75 million in, in reductions. So it came in an environment where we were doing budget cuts. We certainly would have loved to have done more faculty hiring in that time, especially that our enrollment was growing so much over that same time period. Um, but those were the available funds that we had were to cover 880. Mm -hmm. If you go back to 2000, the number to the present is probably about 1,800 new faculty. It's just that period when we started the compact okay. that uh, that's the, uh, the increment. Okay. okay. So it represents uh, a little under half about of that of entire growth during that period. Okay, good. That's all. Yeah, I'm just trying to understand that, you know, the, the rate of the change that we're looking at and all. I mean, I think it's the right thing to do. I'm mm -hmm. just wondering about the pace and what's realistic. Yeah. Uh, within one year versus other years that's already, mm -hmm. whether there might be another pacing of the request for money given yeah. I think, you know, I our th ability. Yeah, I think, I think it'd be, you know, a, as the budget process plays out and, and we see from, you know, at the state level, at the city level, where we end up in terms of our budget, you know, we may have to, you know, restructure that number, restructure that goal. But, um, but as of now, you know, uh, we want to, um, you know, we want to try to uh, add as many full-time faculty as possible. And so 425 is, is the goal we're, sure. we're reaching for. Mm. Professor Martel. As some of you may be aware, the university faculty senate is not always supportive of everything that is discussed around this table. <laughs> but on, on this particular issue. You, you have a question about moving in this direction? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on this particular issue, the, we've been a strong supporter of this uh, 
program, as you know, and it, it, the committee needs to understand that for a major public university system like this to be hiring at this juncture of time and space, it's got to be very close to unique. And, and <coughs> the kinds of resumes that we will be able to attract I think will be truly outstanding. So I expect that, you know, talking about having the right set of physical conditions at the right time, this is the perfect storm from a very positive perspective because I think when the dust settles on this, the people that we'll be able to hire will be very, very, very strong. So over time, you only tenure the people you hire, and if you hire well, this, this, these incoming classes should be extremely Strong. And again, unique as far as I, you know, I doubted the AUP meetings for other issues. And uh, to hear the story, what <laughs> oh, just <laughs> uh, to hear the stories from around the country, it's, uh, it's truly extraordinary. Thanks, sir. Okay. Um, slide 12 is a summary of what we just talked about, and you can see the dollar amounts there broken out by senior colleges and community colleges and our four missions, as well as our financial aid initiative. Um, our mandatory needs are also broken out there as well. Slide 13, I just want to spend a minute on the mandatory, just to give you a summary of what the mandatory cost increases are, since it is the largest component of our request, $115 million. And again, as has been the case for the last several years, the largest component of that is fringe benefits. $67.6 .6 million. Most of that emanates from um, increasing costs in health insurance and in pension costs. Um, our energy budget, um, we are projecting it's going to be $12.2 million above what our current budgeted level is. Then we have 5.2 for building rentals and 30.5 for salary increments and in, in inflation in um, our other than personal services budget. Last slide. Um, what the next steps are, um, be taking a, a vote today here at the Committee for Fiscal Affairs. Um, if approved here, we'll bring it on to the full board at the November 26th meeting. Um, and then once it's approved by the full board, we'll be sharing the document with the elected officials and, and importantly with, with the State Division of Budget and the City Office of Management and Budget. And that's very critical to get it in their hands as soon as possible after no the November 26th meeting because the governor is going to be issuing his executive budget sometime in the middle of January. And then later that month, the mayor will be issuing his preliminary budget for next year. And so we want to make sure that the governor and the mayor, state DOB, city OMB, has um, our request in their hands and know what our priorities are and what our needs are for, for next year. Those last two bullet points on, this, on, on slide 14, um, talked about where the state and city currently are. Um, the state was facing a deficit of $982 million for next fiscal year, which compared to what the budget gaps had been was very, very small. The city's projected gap of 14 was $2.5 billion. However, with what we've just gone through for the last week here in New York, um, you know, these numbers are going to change. Um, and so we don't really know what the current climate is until, you know, the bills start coming in. Um, the revenue projections, you know, um, get a little more focused. Um, but these were the last numbers that have been reported by both the state and the city. I have a quick question. Um, if I go back to slide 13 in terms of sure. the energy, um, yes. correct me if I'm wrong, but it's my understanding that and, uh, uh, the central office is trying to let the school manage their own uh, energy policy in terms of how they can become much more efficient. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing that there is an increase in energy. Is it supposed to help them become better so that cost can decrease over time? Or are we gonna keep increasing that cost over time? Which in that case won't really make any sense because we're trying to become right. energy efficient. No, you're right. This is the first year, fiscal 13 represents the first year that the university has decentralized the energy budgets to the senior colleges. Historically, the university has always managed the energy budget centrally. Um, this year, for the senior colleges, we allocated the funds um, to the campuses. Community colleges, we haven't done it yet, but um, 
but we are certainly expecting, and, and the feedback we've already gotten from the colleges are that there's a lot of activity going on for campuses to find ways to be more energy efficient. So number one, we wanted to do it because it's the right thing to do as a society to be more energy efficient, but also we are very confident that we're gonna find efficiencies in our budget to bring down our energy costs. Now, that doesn't mean the total amount we're gonna spend on energy overall is gonna go down because energy costs are increasing. Um, but we certainly expect that the rate of increase is gonna slow down because of the terrific things our campuses are doing to be more energy efficient. Question? Sure. Um, what, uh, given, um, I mean, we're a very cooperative educational institution, but also as a business person, I'm very competitive. And so I'm wondering about the distinctive advantage that our budget has over SUNY's budget that would be submitted. Um, well, you know, when it comes to the state budget, we are certainly always tied into um, SUNY and, um, in terms of decisions that are made um, in Albany, not only at the exec level, but at the you know, assembly and, and senate level. Um, there's always a certain a pot of money that's set aside for higher ed, and um, that's going to be distributed amongst you know CUNY and SUNY and for TAP and, and all those things. Um, as I said earlier, we we have um, collaborated with SUNY regarding the um, community college request, and we want to be on board with them. There's certainly strength in numbers when we lobby legislators. Um, you know, rather than having seven community colleges lobbying for something, you know, now we're gonna have 37, because we're gonna have the, the, the SUNY community colleges as well. So we have collaborated with them, with them on that. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, there, there's gonna be, you know, decisions made up in Albany about how much of that higher ed pot to, to give out to, to CUNY and to SUNY. And there's always those equity issues. Um, but again, you know, we feel that, um, you know, our request is, um, reasonable in terms of what we're asking the state and city to cover um, and realistic um, and but also moves forward our institution in, in the ways that are outlined in our master plan I think on the capital side though, uh, one would perceive that we are in a weakened position relative to SUNY because so much of the money that has been put into the capital appropriations uh, is motivated by economic development and imperatives in areas of upstate New York where certain SUNY campuses are located. So the money goes through SUNY for really developing and shoring up the economic climate of those communities. Uh, we have not been perceived of as uh, needing that same kind of assistance, although we are having serious discussions about a SUNY 2020 kind of an initiative that was given to SUNY last year. But on the operating side, I think there is a real balance. Okay. I don't see any real difference. Mm, thank you. Uh, beginning the spending of this budget, SUNY to TAP, is when? July 1st. Of 19... Of uh, 2013. Okay. And the amount of money that we are asking that is in addition to what we are spending this year is how much? Uh, that is on slide five, I believe. No, sorry. That's on slide nine, I'm sorry. So our current year budget, it all sources, is $2.8 billion. Right. We're asking for an addition of Two hundred and eight million dollars to that. Took about two hundred nine million dollars to that appropriation. That would bring us up slightly over three billion dollars. So the next question I'm asking has got nothing to do with I consider the appropriateness of this presentation. Mm -hmm. You're a growing institution, and uh, we're frugal, but we're asking for two hundred eight million dollars more, mm -hmm. and we're saying. I presume that however we look at it, our expenditures have a relationship to the problems of the city and the state. And we're saying that the city's projected gap for fiscal 14 is two and a half billion. And we're saying the state is facing a deficit of 982. 
I presume these observations were made before the last week. Mm -hmm. Correct. Is there any uh, way that we could have sort of having it? How can we sort of recognize the problems of those that are going to have to raise the money to fund the budget mm -hmm. that we are aware of what's happening? Right. Well, you know, again, I think we're being very reasonable in our request. And if I just turn everyone's attention to slide 10 to answer your question, Trustee Griffiths, is we are asking the state and the city to pick up on mandatory needs, which um, they have historically done and which we continue to expect them to do. But in terms of the programmatic initiatives, we're only asking State and City to pick up $14.7 million of those programmatic initiatives. The rest of them, we're saying we're going to fund from our self-financing component. So we are trying to take into account the fact that um, the city and the state is projecting a budget deficit, and the city is projecting a much larger budget deficit. And we are trying to be reasonable um, in our request. But at the same point, um, we do feel that you know, CUNY is an economic engine in both the city and the state, and that whatever the city and state invest in CUNY, that they're going to get a good return on their investment and on, on the economy of both uh, I the local that and the state. I presume that's how company. we operate, the way you've just expressed. But somehow, there, I think we should have at least some way of recognizing what is facing our city and state. And... Um, how we articulate it to indicate that we're living in the real world and, and uh, it's what we are asking for is appropriate because we are an engine that will help bail us out, pardon the pun, of the situation that we're in. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I was in the branch of government that's going to have to raise the money, I would like those who are requesting to understand the position they're in, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe the, this document could say we're aware of this, and we do think it's still justified. Yeah. No. No. It's. it's could I, could I sure. Of course. You're making a, a, a very good point, and I think um, the, both the governor and the state legislature acknowledges the fact that when we came forward with the CUNY compact, it was a clarion call to say, we have an obligation to help fund our needs, rather than what happened in the past, that all of the needs were an ask of state or city government. If you look at slide 10, um, you will see exactly the point that we're making. When we when we, we lobbied uh, really ferociously for a, a tuition plan uh, that thankfully we were able to get serious consideration of. If you look at the $226 million that we're asking for, 70 million of that is something that we lobbied for that the state is not picking up. Philanthropy and restructuring is an obligation that we continue to do. The state has always acknowledged that when the fringe benefits are going up, and they watch that very, very carefully, that that is appropriated. So the only thing that we're really asking for, in addition, beyond uh, what I just mentioned, is approximately 30 to $40 million in uh, programmatic needs and in community college faith aid. That's really all we're asking for. Well, if and so that, that to me is a very responsible right. way of playing it. We, the university never played it this way in the past. We would ask for the entire Monty straight up. So uh, perhaps, again, I don't, I don't want to uh, labor the point, but maybe the document should indicate we're doing this well knowing what is happening. We, we can certainly do that in the cover that, letter. In other yeah. words, we, can, we knew it, we considered it, and nevertheless, this is what we think is appropriate under the circumstances. And when we send up our cover letter, we will certainly uh, make that statement very clearly. 
Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Vice Chair, for having an excellent report. I move the approval of the 2013-2014 operating uh, university operating budget request. Uh, do I have a second, please? Second. second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Carries. Third item on the agenda is a resolution to authorize the general counsel to execute a contract on behalf of New York City College of Technology for facilities renovation services. The contract shall be awarded to the lowest responsive and responsible bidder after public advertisement and sealed bidding by the college pursuant to law and university regulation. The contract shall not exceed the total estimated cost of $450,000 per fiscal year and it shall have a five-year term with the right for the university to terminate the contract at any time in, in its best interest. New York City College of Technology will use this contract to obtain facilities renovation services on an as-needed basis. I move the approval of the facilities re renovation services contract. Uh, second? Second. Any discussion or questions? Fine. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? The resolution carries. The fourth item on the agenda is a resolution to authorize the general counsel to execute a contract on behalf of the university to purchase examination program management services from cooperative personnel services without competitive bidding and pursuant to law and university regulations. Such purchase shall not exceed a total estimated cost of $345,000 per fiscal year. The contract term shall be five years with an option to renew for one additional year with the university having the right to terminate the contract at any time in its best interest. It will provide examination management program services and will administer, maintain, enhance the soft and enhance the software system of CUNY Exams Express. In addition, professional services will be provided to CUNY for the purpose of assistance development and analyzing of data generated from CUNY Exams Express System for the Office of Human Resources Management Services. Uh, as is sort of the informal custom here, but I think it's a good one, uh, to, for, before we move the question, to ask the question of, uh, I guess it would be you, uh, Vice Chancellor Fabianza, as to why this is a non-competitive bid. Mm -hmm. um, we've had a contract in place with, with, um, with Cooperative Personnel Services for for many years, and as they, as you described in your explanation, they provide um, examination services um, to our uh, Office of Human Resources for our civil service um, personnel. Um, we have put this contract out for bid in the past, and CPS has been the only vendor that has that has applied um, in, in previous years. Um, they are a, a quasi public agency out in, in California um, and um, you know we, we whenever we do um, a new contract with CPS we always put it in the, the state contract reporter and in the city record um, to put it out there publicly but again in, in the past when we have put it out to bid CPS has been the only firm that has that has um, applied um, and they do provide a unique service here in in developing the uh, exams for our civil service uh, personnel. Matt, is that because they're so specialized in this? Yeah, they, they're, they're very specialized. And what they've developed software specifically for CUNY. Um, and so, you know, if, we, if a new firm applied, it would have to be, you know, starting from scratch um, rather than what CPS is doing, which is uh, making changes to the software that they've already developed. Thank you for that explanation. Uh, I move the approval of the contract to purchase examination program management services from the Cooperative Personnel Services Company. Uh, is there a second? Second. Any further discussion on this agenda item? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? The uh, resolution carries. I would now like to introduce uh, what is termed in, in, as a walk-in item, which is a resolution on intellectual property rights for consideration by the committee. I will read it. Resolved that the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York authorize the General Counsel to execute a contract amendment with Hoffman and Barron LLP on behalf of the university to purchase intellectual property rights legal services. 
This contract amendment will extend the term of the agreement by one year through June 30th, 2013, and increase the value of the contract to a total estimated cost of $600,000 chargeable to the appropriate FAS codes over the five-year term of the contract. The contract amendment shall be subject to approval as to form by the University General Counsel. The University and the University's Technology Commercialization Office will use these legal services in intellectual property law to manage and protect the University's intellectual property. Uh, I move approval of this resolution. Second. Uh, any discussion or questions? Uh, Trustee Griffin. Yes, it's, uh, the contract estimated cost is increased to 600000 mm -hmm. from what? The total, uh, con the initial contract was 400000 and change, right. 450 somewhere around there. It's, it's a, a little above 400000 um, At the time, because it was below 500000 we did not have to bring it to the fiscal committee for approval. Um, but we have been using the services of this vendor um, and have the need to, to utilize it additionally above the contract level. And so that's why we're bringing it up to 600000 if you would just uh, consider a suggestion, and not in any way to indicate a uh, lack of concern for this motion, which I can vote for. Sure, I understand. But should not the uh, resolution indicate from what to what? Mm -hmm. That's a good point. We'll, we'll change it when it goes to the full board. We'll put in there what the, what the original contract amount was. Thank you. And Matt, maybe you might want to say and why. OK. Okay. Thank you. Any um, further discussion? Inquiry. Did I? I did move this, correct? Okay. Yes. Um, it was second. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it was second. And in which case, uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Abstentions? That uh, carries. Um, okay. I now call to order the subcommittee on investments. Uh, the first action item on the agenda will be the improvement, uh, sorry, the approval of the minutes of the meeting of September 5th, 2012. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, I now call on Chief Investment Officer Janice Crone. Okay. Um, on your screen, if you turn to information item private review, um, that will contain both the performance review as well as the, uh, the private so just to start off on page two of that document. Uh, How else did I make your life interesting, Ken? The performance update uh, will focus on the calendar year to date returns through September 30th, which is located on the bottom half of page two. And as you can see, the uh, global risk assets uh, posted very solid gains um, year to date. And um, the U.S. equities have beat um, other global markets. However, the, the gains really have come uh, as a result of the central bank's intervention and not really from any true fundamental reason, um, which, is, which is clear from the next page, three, which shows some statistics on the U.S. economy uh, that the U.S. GDP growth uh, continues to slow, that bond yields continue to fall, oil prices have fallen slightly, and the dollar is up uh, versus the euro and the yen over the, uh, over the trailing 12-month uh, period. The situation, as you know, is not isolated to the U.S., um, and so if you turn to page four, just very briefly, um, you can see that um, the Eurozone unemployment rate is now at record highs, um, and the industrial production of the Eurozone is falling into recessionary territory. Also, in emerging markets, in particular China and in uh, certain countries in Latin America, the, the GDP growth is decelerating. So with that as a backdrop, let's turn to page 9 and focus on the returns for the CUNY investment pool. 
um, which are a little brighter <laughs> than the economic picture. But, um, and if you look at, focus on the second column and the numbers in bold will give you the returns of the portfolio by asset class so that our return for U.S. equity for the first nine months of the calendar year was 16.1 percent. Um, there was 9.6 percent for international equity, 17.4 percent for emerging market equity, 3.9 percent for hedge funds, 6.4 percent for real assets, 5.4 percent for bonds, for a total return uh, year to date of 9.9 percent. Um, over the trailing 12 months, our return is 15.4, and we now have a three-year record with the restructured pool where we're uh, we have an annualized rate of return of 7.8%. All of these total returns um, are beating university uh, medians and the majority of our peers, we're pleased to say. And with that very brief summary on performance, we'll turn it over to Thomas Schmidt-Jefferson from Cambridge to discuss private equity in executive session. With that, uh, we will now go into executive session. Okay, we are uh, now back in uh, public session after having discussed uh, a matter involving uh, an investment decision in an executive session. Uh, as a result of that executive session, is at this time I'd like to move approval of a $5 million commitment to private natural resources. Uh, and based upon the review and recommendation by Cambridge Associates, I, I, uh, I move this, uh, this, this motion to support the investment. Uh, may I have a second? Second. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, hearing none, uh, call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Uh, it carries. Before I adjourn the meeting, uh, Mr. Chancellor, I just want to, you know, first rule of Robert's order is the person that has the capital gets to make the order. And so I just want to say, <laughs> uh, on behalf of all the trustees, I'd like to commend uh, CUNY for the absolutely tremendous humanitarian job during the storm. Uh, I was very proud, as all the trustees were, to be affiliated with this institution that provided shelter and food and a variety of other uh, protections for New York citizens. It was a great use of our resources, and I commend the Chancellor and all those involved. I can't say it as elegantly as Kapu said it in his email, but uh, nevertheless, uh, it is something I know all the trustees are extremely proud of, and we commend the university. This was a great effort by our presidents uh, and their administrative personnel. Uh, we really showed the power of an integrated university in managing this. And on our end here, Alan Dobrin was our go-to guy who really uh, managed uh, this process with the campuses. And I alluded to this uh, very directly this morning when we had our Council of Presidents meeting. Uh, that uh, there's, there's much uh, to be proud of, of the very good work uh, that went on throughout this university. So thank you for that. Thank you. And with that, the meeting is adjourned.